Rex Hunt's fabulous footy flashbacks. Your team's finest moments on video. Flashback to glory. Flashback to heroes. Flashback to the great history-making quarters and legendary highlights from Collingwood. Collingwood go forward towards Samaria Rocker. It's a chance though, Brooks back on. He wastes no time from 60 metres. Oh. It's a sensational goal. Geelong. Jarek. Jarek gives it back to Goggin. Here's some beautiful football. A lovely hand pass across to Yates. Yates shot passes into the goal square. Wall will play on. A goal to the cap and the best piece of footy of the day. I think uh, Dudley's back on there. Oh, Ambler Frebbing. Ambler! Oh, yes! West Coast. Eagles going forward. Oh, is that gas there? Yes, it is. And what a great mark. It goes short. Mate, wearing on the time on centre wing. He's got plenty of time to assess the situation. And wait, that kick magnificently for Lewis. Essendon. Out of Terry Danaher. Oh, round the neck again. At least Buckley stopped him. This could be the best rehearsal for the grand final of 1981 as Neil Danaher comes in for the kick that could possibly win the game. Robs him on McClendon. Still out of him. Tregent to Wiedemann. Wiedemann short to Smart to Jarman. They love this. Micah comes in to the goal square. Jarman kicks it to him beautifully. Wonderfully. 11 goals for Micah. Melbourne. Further forward. Oh, forward. Play on. Runs up towards centre half forward. They're trying the short passes, the Demons. Chance for Spalding. At the back, Jackson. Off it goes to Williams. Over the top. Level punch for goal. Galton goes up towards Kernahan. Wonderful use of the body. He goes to Bradley and does the shepherding. Bradley's got pace and dash. He goes over the middle. Up towards Kernahan on the half volley. This hook was on in a goal to Angelo. St Kilda. Has found uh, Kevin Roberts. Roberts drives it back towards the centre half forward position. Rowland and Callan and Rowland at the back. Tony Lockett has six goals, six. Daniels puts it up towards the goal square. Lock it close! Rex Hunt's fabulous footy flashbacks. From the footy archive, step back in time with fabulous footy flashbacks. Four more great videos with more great quarters of footy on each. North Melbourne, from the black and white days of the 50s through to the reign of King Wayne. Join Bulldog greats Teddy Whitten and Doug Hawkins in this Footscray tribute. Tiger fans relive those magic days of the 70s. While Hawthorne fans bask in their golden era. Four unforgettable videos to take you back in time. Presented by Rex Hunt. The perfect gift at these stores now. Hello Tiger fans, three great games over 30 years for you to enjoy on fabulous footy flashbacks. The first was played at the MCG in 1967. The Tigers were in rebuilding mode under coach Tom Hafey. You might notice the MCG was in the same state, with the Western Stand being built at the Jollymont end. Richmond had some great recruits. Francis Burke and Dick Clay were making their marks, while Royce Hart was emerging as one of the game's great forwards. This day they played North Melbourne, Hart pitted against John Dugdale. The commentators, Tony Charlton, Ian Cleland and former Hawthorne champ, Brendan Edwards. Richmond by nine points as we start the second quarter of the play in the Richmond-North Melbourne match at the MCG. Probably the major fixture of the round of this date. The umpire is, is Don Blue. Goal kickers for the Richmond team, two to Ross Hart, Royce Hart and one to Bill Barrett. And for North Melbourne, goal to Barrett. Wood. Umpire Blue starts the second quarter. A very good bounce. Chance for Bob Pascoe. Patterson tried to kick it off the ground, picked up by Teasdale. Gets up towards the half forward line. It'll have to bounce right there for Gary Farrant, who gives it across towards Laurie Dwyer. Nearly knocked him over then. There's a kick by Dwyer up towards the forward pocket. Roger Dean's waiting for it very uh, patiently and says thank you. And uh, 
he's just on that goal kickoff line then he changes his mind kicks along the stand wing to a lead from dick clay good play by clay to make that loose man he got away from taylor he circles around taylor gets a kick or a good one up towards the half forward flank it's all richmond and there's big patty again good player one of the personalities of the game this is his sixth kick and he's taken four marks big patty center wing Kicking over the half-forward line with a punt kick. Hasn't used those before. They've all been drop kicks. It's a strong one into the goal square. They're going to mark the Roy Star in front. They're appealing for it. To mark all right. Royce Hart. 20 degrees to the line. 20 yards from goal. A chance for his third of Richmond's five. bad miss by the youngster who has now kicked two goals too and uh, just a matter of interest Hart so far has had uh, four kicks only and has kicked two goals too Johnny Dugdale kick it out along the member stand side of the ground a floating drop kick and a good mark taken by Big Bob Pascoe on the half back flank for North Melbourne Richmond a 3-6, leading North Melbourne, two goals two as Pascoe drives it out to the centre wing position. There's Big Patterson, there's a big chance, he's got it two on the centre wing. Peasdale, hang on to him. Patterson sees the lead coming across there from the half-forward line and the person is swift. Might have been blinded by the sun, picked up there by Bowden, gives it across towards Bartlett. Bartlett steadies, shoots for the big open sticks, but I think it's, uh, oh, gee, that must have been close. The wind must have just dragged it in, but it's one point only. Richmond, three goals, seven. Brendan Edwards on Channel 9. I think that handball that we saw there from the Richmond players is one of the reasons why Richmond looked to be opening up the game and why they're scoring a little bit better at this stage than North Melbourne. Beautiful kick by Dugdale. This is a really good kick. And Pascal! Oh, he paid no mark this time. And it's picked up by Dick Clay. Dick Clay drives it back towards the uh, forward pocket. Dugdale and Hart. The ball is knocked away, but Hart is very quick to recover. And uh, North Melbourne players, Allison, and also... Uh, Terry Benton comes up towards the centre of the ground and Dick Clay, Jesus fellas an improved footballer, handballs it across to Patterson and a shocking kick but look where it's going, straight into the hands of Billy Brown. Billy Brown has won himself back a position in the Richmond team, formerly winger and rover. Here's his kick going for the sticks now. It's a pretty strong kick from that position. Difficult angle, but he uh, can't find the main seven-yard area, and it's one point only. So Richmond adds to their growing number of behinds. Three-eight. Golden opportunities missed by the Richmond side. It's another really good kick by Doug Dale, and this time from higher to back for Paddy Ganane. He really playing well. And this is Paddy Ganane's seventh kick, and he's taken five wonderful marks. This is drop kick out toward the centre half forward position. Northy is there, and in front was uh, Evans. Evans has the ball now. Now he's lost it. Out towards Royce Hart. Did a beautiful turn of Hart. He handballs it across to uh, Byrne to Brown, but Brown in trying to get the ball away from Allison grabbed him across the shoulder. So it's a free kick to Tom Allison in the back pocket for North Melbourne. The recovery power of this youngster, Royce Hart, is uh, really good. He'll be a good footballer with a, another year under his belt. Who will mark it this time? Patterson from behind. A beauty. The marks being dragged down by, by Hart, Patterson and Ganane have been really terrific. Here's a kick to within about 20 yards of the goal. There's another one to Hart. He just stood there and Dugdale lunged across to try and knocked the ball away, but uh, it was a fruitless attempt. And Royce Hart, who has kicked two goals two already, has a chance to make it three goals two with this shot, and he would therefore have three goals of Richmond's four. They are three goals eight at the moment. Has he got his right kicking boot on this time? I think he's missed it again. He's got two goals three, and nobody's more upset than Royce Hart. Last time he kicked the ground and thumped his thigh. This time he's uh, been bereft of any uh, sign of emotion. The free kicks are 15 to 7 in favour of North Melbourne, but the marks are 23 to 13. Just showing the big marking power of this Richmond side, 
of which Paddy Ganain has taken five, and of course Patterson three and Billy Barrett three. Speaking of good marks, here's one of the best in John Dugdale playing as fullback for North these days, kicking off beautifully. The um, ball played uh, funny tricks in the air, and that's why they couldn't get nearest the market. Short goal! <laughs> Dugdale who clobbered him, and uh, Hart's head happened to be in the way. He was trying to spoil the mark, and Hart looks uh, not too good uh, as a result. The umpire was right on the scene and took no action. One of the Richmond players didn't think it uh, was uh, all fair and above board, but uh, Dugdale, uh, I think, certainly had the ball as his objective. Oh, I have no doubt about that, Tony. Doug John Dugdale has been an ornament to the game, and he wouldn't do anything untoward in this game of football. And whatever has happened out there has been because Dugdale has tried to make the ball his objective, and quite rightly so. He's OK. He's on his feet. He's groggy. Look at this. He's OK, did you say? Well, he's on his feet. He could be on a stretcher. Well, if you ask me, uh, Royce Hart doesn't know where he is or which end to kick it. He's still very, very wonky on his feet. He hangs his head, he's still very sore as the ball is uh, right near the goal square and the umpire comes in to take uh, part in the next and uh, Hart has collapsed. We're 22 minutes into the third quarter of the MCG and a great mark taken by Big Goodingham has given North Melbourne a chance. A Richmond player down on the ground is uh, Bill Barrett who was brought down after the ball had gone some 30 or 40 yards. In the meantime, Goodingham is a shocking kick will probably go across the line. We are 23 minutes into the third quarter and Richmond are trailing by 14 points. Bill Barrett, star of the game in the first quarter. Magnificent play. He seems to be having trouble with his right thigh and is receiving urgent attention from two trainers. Goodingham in the ruck for the North Melbourne team, which has really carried the fight right up to the Richmond side, second on the ladder. We see Barrett back on his feet now and... Uh, going to be a game where uh, it's the last man standing. Richmond, aggressive in defence as indeed the North Melbourne team is. Darrell O'Brien, a hand pass there to Fenton who was bumped very solidly by Barrett. They've traded some terrific uh, hip and shoulders today. The ball is on the forward line for the North Melbourne team to get right through his uh, feet, but right through uh, Pascoe's feet. Here's his kick going up to the forward flank. Oh, good mark taken and he'll play on. That's a good mark to Taylor. Taylor short passing on the forward line. Kick is smothered, going close to the line, and now it's out. 24 minutes into this third quarter, and it's a 14-point advantage to North Melbourne. As we see Patterson and McGrath, neither could win the knockout, trying to pick the ball up is Tommy Ellison, and umpire Blue says that I will ball it up. It's on the half forward flank for North Melbourne. The marks are 42 to 41 in favour of Richmond. Pascal and McGrath, no cooperation there. And in the meantime, Strang has uh, stick clay. It's taken away by Evans. Evans kicks up towards the forward pocket. A chance for Farron. Farron has marked the ball. Freddie Swift went underneath the ball and Farron stayed back and took it off the second bite. Pretty good kick, this, uh, this young fella. He's got four already. This would be uh, the most difficult angle that uh, he has had to try and negotiate. So far, let's see what he makes of it. A good kick by Farron, right up into the goal square. Attempt to mark by Mike Green, not allowed. It should be rushed through for a point. It is, so that makes them 66 to 51. They lead by 15 points. Farron, incidentally, has taken five marks. He's had nine kicks, and he's kicked four goals. The best kick getters in the game so far are 12 to Bartlett, and uh, 10 to Clay, and 10 to Burke for Richmond. Pretty swift played on, tests the ball down, kicks it into the centre of the ground. Northey sees it go right past him like a shot. O'Brien, grab didn't make much chance to get to, or have much chance to get rid of it. Benton's kick is smothered and Barrett heading for home again. Here he can he shake them off? No, he's dumped and gives a hand pass to the full forward area to, to Neville Crow. Crow too slow and Teasdale takes the ball from him. And the left foot pass on the run from the big brother is highly accurate and finds Karen Nicholas. Karen Nicholas in trouble now through trying to play on. Here's Benton. Oh, just got out of that one. Can he get out of this? Yes, he gets past the Patterson next. His kick is into attack. Good play by Benton. It falls for McCarthy and McCarthy takes the mark. McCarthy's had a ding-dong duel with uh, Perry, plays on quickly, gives it to Laurie Dwyer. Dwyer's kick is uh, not straight enough and will be brushed 
out of bounds. So it's 25 minutes gone in this third quarter. And Richmond are trailing by 15 points. A ding-donger. Nine kicks to Perry, seven to McCarthy. A throw in. And we see a big Goodingham. The ball is knocked away by Patterson. Very close to the line. The ball's picked up by Farrant. Short passes it across towards uh, Ibrahim. The ball is knocked away from him. A chance for Jeff Strang for Richmond. Drives it down towards the centre of the ground where we see a chance now for Darrell O'Brien who's playing very well. He's put it over Northy. He drives it across the half-forward line leading in a race for the ball is Tommy Allenson. Look at Bartlett go after him now. Allenson's having trouble picking the ball up. Now it's all Richmond. Bartlett's tenacity has won him the ball. Good play by young Bartlett. Gets it up towards the centre wing and a ball should go across the ground, uh, across the line. Barton's had 13 kicks. Barry Pascoe, incidentally, has had 16, Teasdale 18 and Dwyer 19 for North Melbourne. The ruck battle is between McGuire and Patterson. Nobody really won it, but uh, winning the ball is Richmond. They go forward, it's onto their half-forward line. The hand passes to Roger Dean. Oh. Dean Sloan getting rid of the ball, he's penalised. <laughs> And he can't find much time to argue about that one. That'll teach him to argue with an umpire. An ordinary player might have been let off with that, you know. And there's the kick up towards the centre half forward position. And Mike Perry beautifully judged that ball. Handballs it across towards, uh, I think it was Bowden. Gets it up towards the centre half forward position. The ball is there with Darrell O'Brien. The ball is knocked away by Benton. Picked up there by Karen Nicholas. Goes out to Teasdale. Teasdale gets it up towards the forward line. Looking for Farrant. Farrant couldn't hold it. But chipping in to help in there was... Uh, it was Wood, gives it back to Parent, and Parent has had a shot across the goal. Five goals to Parent. Well, the way North Melbourne are playing now, I think that I'd put Clelo's money on them at least, and the way the defenders for North Melbourne are playing, Richmond are not able to get goals, and if this continues, it'll be a North Melbourne victory. Ten minutes ago, you said that Richmond would get up. Well, I've changed my mind, Clelo. Ten minutes has made a lot of difference. <laughs> Fifteen points again in North Melbourne's favour. More. Here we go once more, Pasco high in the air, he's dominating the rucks now. He takes it, drives it up towards the full forward position, over the head of Parent, it bounces away from Green, but it will beat them all across the line. And we are 27 minutes into this third quarter, and the scoreboard says that Richmond are 6-15-51, trailing North Melbourne, who are 11-6 by 21 points. Another throw in, Crow, Goodingham, Crow wins it, gets it out towards Bartlett, and Bartlett kicks it across the line, and the umpire says, we'll throw it in. 21 points the difference, North Melbourne still in front, and we're in the time-on period in the third quarter. Richmond led by nine points at the first change, North Melbourne by five at uh, half-time. North Melbourne have carried on with it since then. Green's kick, outs the ball for the third time in a row, in the pocket. Well, <laughs> The players that. thought it was across the line, but it wasn't. Well, it certainly wasn't a ten yards for a mark. Certainly About three and a half. There's the kick up towards the half-back flank. All Richmond and Burke is there to take the ball. Richmond are too anxious to try and play on and they get themselves into trouble. See this? He's running around, doesn't know where to kick it. So he kicks it high in the air to the centre wing, looking for Ganane. Ganane has the ball knocked away, but the umpire said he held it long enough. He picked the ball up, waiting to get it to the lead, which will come from Orchard, obviously. There's his kick down towards Orchard. Dugdale lurking at the back, but couldn't quite hold the ball. Now we see Orchard in front and Roger Dean is there. A free kick to... Uh, the Richmond player, Roger Dean. Yeah, manhandled by Dugdale. Dean had his beady eye on the ball all the way, was making the ball his objective. The ball in towards the goal square, that's clever play, turning out of trouble. Excellent play by, by one of the North Melbourne defenders. The ball is to the halfback flank and now it's across the line. A clever play was by Tommy Allenson, who's played very well in the back pocket for North Melbourne. There oh. we see uh, Crow trying to knock the ball out towards Bowden. Picked up by Karen Nicholas. Handballs it back to Dwyer. Dwyer gets it up towards the half-forward line. Oh, Barrett came from the pack. Nobody could mark it, and the ball goes across the line. It's very close to three-quarter time. 29 the minutes have gone, and it's a lead of 21 points to North Melbourne. Uncontested knockdown, Richmond win it handsomely, double-handed from Neville Crow straight to Burke, Burke's kick onto the half-forward line, North Melbourne again playing strongly in defence, will clear this ball. Darrell O'Brien gets the ball out of play, and uh, we'll await the next throw-in, it's in the shadows of the members' stand. Teasdale on the ball now against Crow. 
Nothing much happened there. In comes Bowden for the Richmond team. A nice sidestep. It was uh, the class of Fred Astaire. A hand pass over here to Patterson. Patterson bowled over. His free kick. Patterson is at uh, 45 degrees to the goals at the old scoreboard end. And now the new stand end. And it's only about 35 yards out. Richmond desperately need this goal. They trail by 21 points and it's very close to three-quarter time. We've played for 30 minutes. If he gets this, it'll only be 15 points the difference, but he won't get it. It'll only be one point. So Richmond now trail by 20 points. Bad luck for number 25. He's had two of those opportunities. Should have both been goals. He's missed them both. North Melbourne playing well all over the ground. Their back line playing tenaciously. The centre line and their forwards are capitalising opportunities and there's very little between the rucks at this stage so it looks as though North could go on with it. Doug Dale kicks it wide to the wing. There's a chance for Richmond's Neville Crow. He's been paid the mark, held it long enough. He'll have to hurry and get it down. He's taking too long. There's his kick. It's a high one. Getting out to where we see Rogers. And there's a three-quarter time throw in. An interesting decision. The mark has been allowed because the siren went just that fraction of a second after the mark. It's Paddy Ganane. Something to bring the best out in Big Paddy. You'll either kick it along the ground or kick a 60-yard beauty. They really need goals. Can Paddy kick a goal? Oh, what? Giant punt kick. Beauty! Oh. Well, that's the way to finish the quarter. A magnificent 65 yarder by Paddy Ganane. So at three-quarter time, North Melbourne are 11 goals, six, and Richmond are seven, 16, a difference of 14 points. The final quarter about to start at the Mecca for cricket and football in the, this city, the MCG. It's umpire Don Blue. North Melbourne, look at this stage. It's like uh, really good things to lower the Tigers' colours. The Tigers are in second position in the fight for the Premiership and North Melbourne eighth. North Melbourne look like being giant killers for two weeks in a row. Big Pop Pasco punched the ball onto the forward line as far as an ordinary man could kick it. Will North Melbourne carry on where they've left off? They're 14 points ahead at this stage. Split decision here, and the umpire must bounce it. Skinner's had the ball held to him by Wood. It's on the half forward line for North Melbourne. The bounce going for it, knocking it some yards is Mike Patterson. And here we see going for it Ray Taylor. But the Burke is on his hammer. The ball's across the line on the half forward flank for North Melbourne. Parent has kicked five goals for North Melbourne out of the 11 that they have scored. Two goals to Teasdale, one each to Ibrahim, Goodingham, Pascoe and Wood. The Sun's proving a problem. Patterson on the right and uh, Pascoe on the left. Valley poses a struck as Ibrahim kicks into the shadows again. And the goal kickers for Richmond who have kicked seven goals, 16, two to Hart. One each to Ganane, Northey, Barrett, Brown and Orchard. Wood didn't agree with that decision. Bartlett's happy to receive it, even though his kicking leg doesn't seem to be in too good a shape at the moment. Bartlett, first rover for the Richmond team, kicks the ball to the half-back flank and the shadows of the members stand. Most of the attacking today has been done along around this flank. A, a, a mark or an infringement there for shepherding. Uh, when the ball was uh, more than five yards away, goes to Dick Clay, he kicks into the centre, where it's a North Melbourne mark, and it's taken by number 17 for them, Barry Pascoe, who's been a consistent player all day. The ball is kicked to centre-half forward, kicked rather short. Teasdale was a little late there to get up for the mark. Billy Brown, having a wrestle with another small man in Laurie Dwyer, he takes the ball off him and kicks the ball to the new stand wing. Taylor lost the ball, it was taken by Roger Dean, he kicks the ball almost back over his head, and Stewart is standing there quite comfortably to take the mark on the half-back flank for his side. 50 to 48 of the marks in favour of Richmond as Peter Stewart takes the ball on the half-back flank. They have a lead of 14 points. There's a lovely kick by Stewart, but it's all Richmond, there's three of them there, and Mike Perry, the red-headed Mike Perry, takes the mark, plays on quickly, oh, why is he stopping him? Umpire Blue is... I don't know why, but he has made him come back and kick over his mark, so he plays on quickly again, drives it across the centre of the ground, looking for Northey, who has been uh, held at least by uh, O'Brien today. They've had seven kicks each. O'Brien gives it across towards Cara Nicholas, but the ball's bounced back to Northey, never give him away. Northey gets it out to Barrett. Barrett steadies, and a magnificent drop kick by Barrett. He's riding towards the goal square, but it's one point only. You can sense that when Barrett gets hold of the ball, the stands lift and wait for something to happen. And he certainly would have brought the stands down had he kicked that goal. And he wasn't that far away from it either. 
13 points of difference now in favour of North Melbourne. There's the kick by Doug Dale and he has found Goodingham. Talking about Barrett, he had 10 kicks in the first quarter, but only one in the second quarter and one in the third quarter, and Benton has got on top of him since quarter time. A good kick uh, by Peter Stewart. Comes to the uh, position, the centre-half back, no mark to Perry, and the ball is picked up here by Roger Dean, a left uh, hand pass across to Burke. Burke is in trouble, gets his kick, it goes out towards Bowden, Bowden gets it up towards the half-forward line, there's a chance for Paddy Ganane. Ganane right on three-quarter time. The siren had in fact gone with the, just as he had taken the mark. Kicked a beautiful goal. His first for the day. And that uh, put a lot of heart back into the Tigers. And he'll certainly add immeasurably to, uh, to that spirit if he can convert this mark uh, for full points. It's his tenth kick and he's taken eight marks. Paddy Ganane, one of the personalities of the league. The goal umpire has not moved. Two goals for Paddy Ganane. Earlier in play, Ganane's block kicks weren't coming off too well, not that he was close enough to score, but now that he's using punt kicks uh, after being switched to full forward in the uh, second half, he's uh, certainly kicking very well. I think Ganane is probably Richmond's only hope now. If he can kick goals, Richmond could still be in it. Five minutes into this last quarter, and that goal by Ganane has brought this ground alive. There's over 55,000 people here, and Richmond uh, only trailing by seven points. Alan Richardson a player in the side but uh, with his uh, right arm in plaster at the moment there's the messenger and a very busy one today he's trying to G the players on it's gone Richmond's way again Bill Barrett tried to relay it on but he was hampered the ball went towards Northey but he lost it to uh, lost it to number 17 in Barry Pascoe and it's taken by number 27 Laurie Dwyer who gives it to Teasdale who gives it to Dwyer Dwyer on the rampage on the forward line is run down by Burke but too late the kick is to centre half forward and that should be a North Melbourne mark the mark to Young Evans who is some 40 yards out, but straight in front. A vital scoring opportunity then, six minutes into the final quarter for the North Melbourne team, who could get back to a 14-point lead if Evans is able to convert. They led by 14 points at Lemon Time, then they lost uh, their advantage by a goal, and now they're trying to get it back again. It's a strong kick. It's a goal. That's the equaliser, so they go back to lead by 13 points. North Melbourne in front, 13 points, seven minutes into this last quarter. I think we can contribute that goal. Uh, it was due to the good work of Laurie Dwyer. What a brilliant little player this fellow is. He's roving today and he's really going well. Dwyer's had 21 kicks for the game and those comments were from Brendan Edwards for GDV9. Welcome again to the forces in Vietnam to this telecast through the General Television Corporation. Bowden. Richmond Ruck Rover with the ball in the centre of the ground, wastes no time, times against the Richmond team, and he kicks to the half-forward line where Roger Dean, always an acrobat, can get inches off the ground uh, to take the good mark. Paddy Ganane right back in the goal square, waiting for his opportunity. Out he comes, can he fly up for it? Oh, he got two hands to it, and then was really buffeted hard from behind. He did a surface dive forward. In the meantime, the ball is cleared right to this area, which is in the shadows of the three-tiered stand, which is known as the New Olympic uh, stand. If you're wondering what Roger Dean is doing having a shot for goal, it's because he's been shifted in the back pocket to the half-forward line and Skinners is in the back pocket. Barton is pushed in the back. Must receive a free kick. He's on the half-forward line, some 55 yards out from goal. He could kick it from here, but it would be a really good kick. It would be one out of the box. Going to be short. Ganane nearly a mark. Barrett, a snapshot at the goals. It goes right across into the far pocket. Crows on his own if he can make up a pace to get there. He's beaten one, gives a hand pass to somebody in a better position. That's Nordy. Nordy just says that was kick, and Nordy brings the stand down. Nordy hasn't been in the game very much today. In fact, he's had seven kicks, but he's got a couple of really good goals, and these are what count in this game today. That was with the ball in play. The other one was a long, deliberate kick uh, after a free kick a long way out. I commented just earlier in this quarter that Northey had been held by O'Brien, but he's such a scarlet pimpnel, you can't afford to leave him alone. That was the Richmond bench. They're still worried because they trail by seven points. Burke sends him into attack. Well, no, he doesn't. It's just gone high in the air. I don't think it'll be a mark to anybody. Now is Barrett. He's got the pace to get away from these players. He's being chased there by uh, Barry Pascoe. He's bounced the ball. Billy Barrett, a dynamic player, gets it up towards the full forward position. Terrific play by Barrett from the centre. He's starting to play now with the same kind of purpose as he showed throughout the first quarter in which he was the dominant player in the entire game. 
he was tremendous in the first quarter and then with only one kick in the second and one kick in the third he started to come alight again and a beautiful mark to cap off Barrett's good play by Paddy Ganeen this is his ninth mark 11 kicks three goals inspirational play by Barrett there match winning football the sort of football that lifts the whole team and boy do Richmond need it now they're really fighting back and it, it is going to be a really interesting result we're nine minutes into this last quarter at the MCG and the difference is one solitary point in favour of North Melbourne. The Teasdale, a double-handed knockback all towards the man in white. Richmond coming forward again. They've got their tails up now. A fickle bounce there is costly to them. It finds Laurie Dwyer. His disposal is usually good. It was misdirected, but uh, they still might get out of it. No. Nope. Strang picked up the ball. His kick is onto the half-forward line. The Tigers bounce back into calculation again. It's this way and that, that way. What a, a, a vacillating game. It's gone to North Melbourne there. Onto the centre wing. It's Richmond's command now. Richmond in the move through Dick Clay. He passes right onto the line to Billy Barrett, who a moment ago was right on the other wing. And Barrett on the half-forward flank for the Richmond goal has taken a beautiful mark. He's on the half-forward flank. And this magnificent drop kick, Artis gets it up towards Paddy Ganane, but this time in front and marking well is Peter Stewart. Seven points, Richmond lead. The knockdown has been taken by Allison. Allison kicks it up towards the half-back line, but I think it will beat Dick Clay across the line. It does before Evans can get to it. It's 11-19, 85 Richmond, North Melbourne 12-6-72, a lead of seven points, and we see a player on the ground. Billy Barrett. Barrett is down once more. And it's on the half-back flank. The umpire says, play on. Roger Dean turned out of trouble. He's put his head into trouble. Play on. Parent has it. Parent's bundled out of the road. There's a chance for golden opportunity for Richmond. Bowden took his time. It's down towards the forward pocket where Bartlett has eluded Allison. Turns, but his kick is a shoddy old kick. And it's uh, across the line. Barrett's got cramped. That'll either straighten it out or accentuate it. He's had it a couple of times since half-time. He had ten kicks in the first quarter and only two up to the last quarter, but he's fired again in this last quarter as we see Patterson take it out of the air. A left foot snap goes up towards the forward line. Paddy Ganane tries for it. It's a valuable point because Richmond now lead by eight points. Coach Tom Hafey of the Richmond team, concerned about Bill Barrett, sends his emissary in Alan Richardson right out to the scene to check on the, uh, the fitness of the champion. North Melbourne getting ready to kick off. Goodingham it is. It's a shocking kick. What's he doing kicking off? I wouldn't know. But fortunately, it has found Taylor, who was on the half-back flank. Teasdale's calling for it in the middle of the ground. He drives it towards Teasdale. McCarthy is also there. And McCarthy knocks the ball away straight in the hands of Bartlett. Bartlett kicks it back towards the half-forward line. It bounces over the head of four players, five players. And it's John Northey playing it like a basketball. He's caught with it, gets away, handballs it out towards Patterson, who brushes his way past three opponents. The ball is kicked off the ground by Carol Nicholas. But Burr, oh, look at Bergen, coming through, gets it up towards the forward line, and Orchard! Richie Beno could not have done better. A magnificent slip catch by Orchard, 15 yards in front of the goals, and this should seal the game. Orchard was the first reserve of a complement of four for the two sides to come onto the field, and he came on in place of uh, Royce Hart, who was off within five minutes of the start of the second quarter. There's the kick by Orchard. Two goals to Orchard. Orchard has certainly not let Hart down because that was the most courageous mark of the day. He was running backwards straight in between two North Melbourne defenders. He put one hand out and he took a beautiful mark. He certainly deserved everything he got there. Time on now being played in the Richmond-North Melbourne game at the MCG. Headquarters of the big game in the Victorian Football League. And the crowd starting to leave. Fourteen points Richmond's favour. They were fourteen points down at Lemon time and they didn't look as though they'd be able to extricate themselves from the mire. I agree with you. I didn't think they could come out of this. They were fourteen points down. Now they lead by fourteen points as Pasco drives it down towards the forward line. The ball bounces away from McGrath. Goes to Evans. Evans shoots for the goal. And it's a goal to North Melbourne. So it's not over yet. It's back to eight points the difference as we begin the time on period in this last quarter. 
Goal scorers for both sides and best players coming up in a moment. For Richmond, four goals to Ganane, two to Hart and Northey and Orchard, and one to Barrett. For North Melbourne, five to Parrott, two to Teasdale and Evans, and one to Goodingham, Pascoe and Ibrahim. We begin the time one period as umpire Blue starts again with his ordering. The trainers away from the, uh, the centre of the ground. As he bounces it, it's all Richmond. The ball goes to Bartlett, but he's grabbed. The umpire says play on, a chance for Dick Clay, good player, gets wide to the centre wing, Darrell O'Brien and Northey go for it, the ball has uh, beaten them both, but Bergen is there, he's played well, since shifted to the half-back flank, gets it up towards the forward pocket, and the best players so far for Richmond are Ginnain, Clay doing very well, Shinners, uh, Barrett in the first quarter and last quarter, and also Patterson. Richmond leading by eight points, a do-or-die struggle, two minutes of time on gone at the MCG. Richmond versus North Melbourne, the Tigers lead by eight, they're second on the league ladder, here's Northey adding to the score perhaps, a left foot kick for the long way out, Northey's third goal. 27 minutes into this last quarter and Richmond have gone back to lead by 14 points. I would say that that has sealed the fate for North Melbourne because this fellow, Northey, he's a scarlet pimpernel and you can't leave him unattended for one minute. The best players for North Melbourne are Teasdale, Farron, Laurie Dwyer particularly and Barry Pascoe. The most entertaining game and a bruise-filled encounter. North Melbourne's way. Perry. A nice blind turn and then turn right back into trouble. The ball towards North Melbourne's half forward line. Oh, he dropped it. Completely dropped it. North Melbourne's red and back. He's only just come onto the field. 19th man. The goal kickers for Richmond who have kicked 13 are four to Ganane, three to Northey, two to Hart and Orchard, and one each to Brown and Barrett. For North Melbourne who have kicked 13 goals, five to Farrant, two each to Evans and Teasdale, one each to Ibrahim, Goodingham, Tasco, that's Bob, and Wood. Bob Tasco missed the knockdown then. It was taken by Richmond. And good play between Bowden and Roger Dean. Will clear the ball for the Richmond team. They're well and truly into attack now from that centre wing position. The ball to the half forward line and it's marked by Barry Pasco. Pasco, one of North Melbourne's best players. Barry Pasco from the half-back flank kicks to the centre wing. Anybody to mark here? Farron, who's on the ball now, has taken a good mark. Coming in third in line. Farron on the centre wing for the North Melbourne team. Running out of time here, we've had four minutes of time on. Finds on the half-forward line, Bernie McCarthy, who's been good in fits and starts. 29 minutes into this last quarter, and Richmond lead 98 to 84, 14 points. Farrant has kicked five goals, and Ginane four. And here we see Bernie McCarthy, been very quiet today, kicks it up towards the full forward position. North Melbourne trying to mark the ball, Taylor it was, the ball has rushed away from him now, and here's the Richmond, oh, grabbed pretty high, the umpire says play on, now he's seen it, a free kick to Bowden at half-back flank. So Richmond looks like consolidating their double chance, because they will win this game at the 30-minute mark, they lead by 14 points. Patterson, handballs it across towards Fred Swift. Fred Swift drives up towards the half-forward line, a chance for Bartlett. He will knock it out towards Roger Dean, changed his mind, kicked it himself. It's down towards Paddy Ganane, but he's brushed out of position. The umpire says play on. Paddy's a bit of an actor, you know. And it's out towards the forward pocket, kicked off the ground by Northey. This fellow's a constructive footballer, isn't he? Turns round, kicks it back towards the forward pocket, setting himself as Orchard. The ball is knocked away from Orchard. Now it's out towards uh, Barry Pascoe, who gets flattened by Paddy Ganane, and then uh, rush through for a point. 30 minutes to play gone in this last quarter. Richmond up 13-22 to North Melbourne, 13-6. Bill Barrett helps Barry Pascoe up onto his feet after he got a terrific sandwich between Barrett and uh, Paddy Ganane. That's to Darrell O'Brien, number 12 for the North Melbourne team. Bill Brown all over him, no free kick. North Melbourne in possession of the ball, a hand pass when grabbed, kick off the ground, it's coming Richmond's way again, they're attacking the Richmond goal, Benton who kept uh, Barrett out of the game in the second and third quarters, after Barrett dominated the game in the first quarter, sees the ball goes to Teasdale, Teasdale on the half forward line, held up by Strang of the Richmond team. Time is all gone, Richmond must win this game, they're 99 points to 84, but what a terrific encounter it's been, Richmond still have the ball into attack, they've had it in attack for most of this final quarter, they've done better in the final term than North Melbourne, who seem to expend their effort with great play in the second and third term. Bartlett's been a good player for Richmond as Pascoe gives it across to Woods Ellison who fell over. He turns, steadies himself, he gives it to Darrell O'Brien, he handballs it across to Evans. Evans kicks it high in the air, not very constructive football. A Richmond mark, Dick Clay. The 
Shepard and Boy has proved a great find for Richmond. He came as a full forward, but Richmond soon found him a position on the wing, and he's one of the best wingers in Victoria. Carried the white V for Victoria just a few weeks ago. Here he is, 55 yards out, and there's his kick. It's a magnificent kick by Dick Clay at the river. kicks of the game and Richmond deserved to win it. They've had 35 shots to 19 scoring shots of North Melbourne so they really deserve to win this game. It's been a great last quarter and the Tigers have given everything to come from behind. Brendan Edwards on GDB9 at the MCG. Umpire Don Blue starts it off with only about a minute left. The game's over. Put down your glasses, as they say in the racing parlance. Richmond, after being out of the game at three-quarter time, have come right back in to win handsomely and uh, appreciably boost their premiership prospects. The ball is on the half-forward line here. It's in uh, North Melbourne's possession. Wood, he played well in the first quarter. Over to Karen Nicholas. North Melbourne players are more tired than the Richmond men, I think. The going gets harder when you're behind, and the short pass here has found Rettenbach, who has only been on the field five minutes. Written back, 19th man for the North Melbourne team, is on the half-forward flank. His kick is a grubber. It's uh, going towards Ibrahim. Ibrahim kept it going forward, caught it like uh, a man in the flying trapeze. A left-foot kick by him is close to being a goal, but it's a point. And there's the end of the game. A great win to Richmond in a great game. The Tigers would go on and win the flag in 1967. The first of four flags in eight years under Hafey. We move forward to 1986. Premiership coach Tony Jewell returned to become the fourth different coach in four seasons. These were battling days for the once great club. In May that year, the Tigers journeyed to the SCG. Sydney had won six of its first seven games under Tommy Hafey, who had left Richmond, gone to Collingwood and Geelong, and was in his first season in the Harbour City. This was a tall order for Richmond. At the last break, the Swans led by a goal. Final quarter just about to start. Simmons big league from the Sydney cricket ground. The Swans lead by six points after they kick 5-4 in the third quarter. Five goals straight. Mark Lee shoots out the hand pass taken by Whiteman. Richmond into attack through a near. Roach has to beat two. It's knocked down to Tui who almost stumbled, but he does get rid of the ball. It's a short kick though, back towards the wing position. A big pack of players out there. Great mark to Whitman, about the first one he's taken today. That'll be a 15 metre penalty. Here it is in replay, a fine mark by the former Footscray skipper. Edmund up to half forward, left flank. Oh, great mark again, Danaher, the Tigers, not able to control the big marking Swans early in this term. The young fella having a bad trot, Brian. That was better. Just about out of bounds, who's going to get there first? James looking for a free kick, but his opponent hasn't got the ball yet. And umpire Peter Howe has decided on a bounce, almost in the Swans' left forward pocket. Mark Denneher is probably why uh, Tony Jewell was loath to move Jess away from him. Mark Lee thumbs it down, but it's picked up by Paul Hawke. His kick is a short one, opportunity for Healy. Francis is there first, and the ball crossing the line, touched through for one point. And so the Swans lead by a margin of 7, 13-12 to 12-11 as we approach the 92nd mark of the final term. Out the James, but the ball will have to go back. The goal umpire hadn't finished waving the flags. Norwood takes the mark, thought about playing on, gets around Ryan. The mark is taken by Healy. He thought about going on as well. And he would just about be within kicking distance. So fair way out. Kick three goals in the first quarter. Shows what can happen when uh, another player kicks out from full back. Francis kicked out from full back. And now he, he wasn't been able to pick up his man Healy. That's right. Gerald Healy, 45 to 50 metres out, almost on the boundary line. It's not a bad sort of a kick at the post. That's, I think, four posters to the Swans this afternoon. It increases their lead to eight points at the two-minute mark. Eight points, the difference, the doctor and the wife. She hasn't got the TR on today. As we wait now for the ball to come back into play. That's a long kick by Jess, nearly to the centre of the ground. Now there's a strong mark to Eidmarket. So Eidmunger and Lee having a great battle. Even though Lee's made a difference since coming on the 15 metres, this brings him over the centre half forward position. Big fella goes for the long kick into the forward pocket. Ball pushed away, picked up by Francis. He had a fresh air shot, just gets a hand pass out. Waitman with a hand pass coming out to Burton. It bounces okay there at half back. 
Out wide coming in as Hogg. He's quickly attended to by uh, Browning there. Right on the boundary line, the ball knocked out of bounds. And it's out there towards the Swans half fourth line, about 75 metres around from their goal. They're 13, 13, 91 to Richmond, 12, 11, 83. Difference of eight points. So the Tigers still in there with a big chance. The two number ones again. Knocked out by Lee and punched on by the second time, but no one there. But there's a chance now as the ball is picked up by a near. Over it goes to Manton. Manton over to Waitman. Hogg's got it now from a good distance out. Coming into meet it. This could be a goal of Pickering. I think he's got it. Well, that was a quick return. It's only two points the difference now, Robert. Yes, and Pickering with four goals on the board from the half-forward flank. And, uh, no, I most certainly would take Tui away from him now, Lou. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's no greater trier in, in the game than Bernard Tui, but uh, if your player's having the better of you, then you must do something about it. James off and coming back on to Richmond is Bauer. We're approaching. Just on the four-minute mark of this last quarter two points the difference in favor of uh, the swans and that was a good uh, comeback by the tigers on a night skull that was pickering's fault lack of talk by uh, the swans though lou when we saw coleman and carroll collide and it let the swan uh, let the tigers in it'll be lee against uh big uh Einmunger again well i, I think uh Einmunger forced that one down to mitchell up it goes now towards the full forward position at the back is kappa going for goal number nine well tackled that time by ryan Ryan goes after him again, picked up by Jasper. I think he might have taken out no, the umpire, so that's OK. And the ball driven out there, and a good mark taken there by Bays. Now, he's about 45 metres out, could easily kick this one if he doesn't go for a short pass, of course. There's the kick right into the goal square. Pack set themselves, Kappa again for goal number nine, and he's got it! That's nine goals to Kappa, and eight points in front of the Docks, laughing his head off up there. That's an excellent piece of play by Capra. And it's uh, good to see uh, Warwick not wanting to fly over the top of the pack all of the time. He saw that Tony Danaher was the player going for the mark. Stayed down, over the back it came, and then a lovely snapshot. But a good mark by Bayes to repulse that uh, Richmond side and put the ball back in and give Capra the opportunity. Nine goals to Warwick Capra. Can he make it ten for the afternoon? More importantly, can the Swans hang on and win? Picked up by Paul, couldn't get rid of the ball. Bauer fumbling in that very heavily congested centre area. And the umpire will bounce it once more, about five metres inside uh, Richmond's attacking area. Well, it's been a thriller. Neither side has been able to get a clear break. I think the biggest break we had was about 18 points to the Swans early in the game. Waitman. Waitman, long kick by the uh, little rover. Oh, Pickering, here he is again. He has had a field day. Thank you very much. There were three Swan defenders running around in the days there. That they didn't know where they were. Well, Michael Pickering, 13 kicks, 10 marks, 6 handballs. All his Christmases have come at once. Uh, he's a good player, Pete. The stats just backing up what you're saying. Luke. Yep, very good player. But, uh, to echo the comment of Bob before, the move, it would appear to most anyway, long overdue. Pickering has got it, I think. Goal. Two to Pickering in this quarter. He's kicked five. Pickering. And two points the difference again. From the moment the game started, Pickering has been a dangerous player out there on the half-forward line. And you just cannot afford to allow players like Pickering any sort of looseness at all and the five goals from a half forward flank is a magnificent performance in any language. Two points the difference, 97 players, 95 as we approach the seven minute mark of the final quarter, the Swans get the ball out of the centre, Mitchell's kick up towards full forward, Kappa again with Jess, dragged off the ball by Eustace, Landy trying to break clear, Bowers in there as well and the umpire will bounce it about 35 to 40 metres out from the Swans goal. Just over the seven-minute mark of the last quarter, two points the difference in favour of the Swans. They've got a chance to score here. Knocked out by Lee, grabbed by Burton, the ball booted back towards the centre of the ground. Warwood couldn't hold that mark, it was a dangerous one. Now he's clear, a hand pass, coming back there to Tony Moore, but he fall, uh, fell over. Bauer goes in, grabs Morwood too high, and he'll get a free kick, that's Tony Morwood. Take the ball around about the uh, centre of the ground, on, out towards the edge of the square. The ball is over the half forward line. Oh, there's a strong mark to Edmund in front of Landy. It's Landy making the mistake there of trying to mark from behind. Yes, should have gone the punch. 
on replay again. We see Lanny not trying to punch it away. Well, Edmund would be about uh, 35 to 40 metres out, just about directly in front, yet to score a goal. Had a pretty quiet day, Jimmy. Well, he's uh, been well covered by Land. He's had to go off the ground a couple of times. The kick it doesn't make the distance. Lee got his hands to it. The umpire will play that mark. Free free to to oh, it's a free kick to Jess. Free to Fields. So Jess to take the free kick down there at full back. Well, Jimmy Jess knows the game. He goes long. At the back of Sikarski goes the knock on Land. He tries to crash through the pack. He was grabbed and hold the ball against him. He's going back for the free kick. He's rather amazed he didn't get it. But he I didn't hand pass it forward, Lou. He threw it forward and that still leaves him in possession. Bays into the goal square. At the back is Kappa. Well pushed on by Eustace. Kappa gives a hand pass to Edmund. A snap at goal, but he's off target. And it's through for one point. So the difference now, three points as we approach the nine-minute mark of this last quarter. This game has been a ripper today. There hasn't been anything at all day, Pete. Been very close as Francis this time kicks in. And on this occasion, it is successful. Picked up by Burton. Browning has the run. Now it's left to Pickering. Well, he's just about best on ground, isn't he? He's having a tremendous afternoon. His opponent there, too. He almost took the mark, but it's left to Mark Roberts from fullback. And he's done a great job down there on Rochi today. Ryan behind Danaher. Beautiful play, Roberts. It was the long kick again. Carroll now on Pickering. And uh, so Dennis Carroll has been shifted across. So done a great job at the centre half back right throughout the day. But uh, Mark Roberts, as Lewis said a couple of times, and that was an excellent piece of play by Roberts to get that ball down to Danaher. He'd be just about the Swan's best player, Mark Roberts. I'm not kidding for effectiveness, Bob. But a great game. Danaher, can he get the distance from 45 metres out? It's a goal. What a great game of football we're watching this afternoon. 15-14 to 14-11. This one's by nine points. Listen, I'll repeat what I just said. A fantastic piece of play by Mark Roberts. Uh, Tui doing well to come across and, and cut off the lead and at least stop it as Ryan comes off the ground. Clark on the ground. And then Roberts swooping on the ball and showed a good turn of speed for a big fellow as well. Nine points, 15-14 to 14-11, 104 to 95. Sydney, Sydney is the chart. Can the Tigers come back? Knocked away by Mark Lee. Fumbled by Big Manton. Could have almost been uh, given a free kick. The umpire says no, play on. Tapped out by Hogg. Oh, not much talking there as Aaliyah runs into one of his own men and then gets caught by Tui. Got it in the back. Might have been a bit lucky. He will get a free kick, John Anir, at centre field. No doubt it was a free yes. kick, though. Yeah. He did run into one of his own players as he tried to get clear. So Anir, 15 kicks and 7 marks, 5 handballs. So 20 possessions for him this afternoon, Anir. Long kick up the half forward. Carroll at the back, goes the spoil, effectively. Ball hits the deck. Opportunity for Bauer now, having just come back onto the ground, but he's put it straight out of bounds on the full. And it will be a free kick to the Swans in the left back pocket to be taken by Browning, will it be? Yes. We'll have trouble getting that one back for a while because it's up in the, in the stand that's being built. So first come, first served up there. I wonder who's going to go up and get that. I think we've lost two balls already today, have we? At least two. Yeah, that could be rather painful. Now somebody's got it, has he? No. It's up in the stand. Right on the edge of the gutter and it won't come down. So a new ball coming out. We'll see who's uh, game enough to go up there and fox that. Well, Craig Davis can still kick <laughs> well anyway. <laughs> that beautifully. <laughs> well done, Craig. And the football's nice, guys. Mark Browning from left back pocket. Ironman over the top of Lee. Good judgment by the big uh, Swans Ruckman. That about the kick. Oh, it bounced right on the line and tap ultimately over it. It will be a boundary throw in on centre wing. 12 minutes gone into this last quarter and, of course, the difference, nine points in favour of the Swans. And it's on their half-forward line, about 70 metres out from their goal. Chance here for Anir to get clear, but they collar him and the umpire will ball it up once again. Still on the half-forward line for the Sydney Swans. Swan score is 15-14-104 to Richmond 14 11 95 Punched out by Lee again. Tapped on again by Bauer. Going after it as Hawk runs into a bit of trouble but spins out nicely. A hand pass back to Williams. Always doing something with it as he drives it up there towards Gapper and Jess. 
Kappa got up, it could be a free kick. He's got him on the shoulder that time. Yes, there's no value in that sort of play by Warren Kappa. But he's kicked nine goals so far. Kappa put up a terrific performance. The ball back, a long one by uh, Jess in the centre of the ground. Punched out by Browning. They're all missing it too. He tries to push it out. Waitman goes down. So does Anir. The umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Anir at centre field again. Very quiet the first quarter. He certainly made up for it since. A hand pass coming out now to Pearl. Pearl out there on the wing position. A short pass. That was Sikarski, I should say. And we see the ball grabbed here by Hock. Hock's kick is up there towards the full forward position. Roach is swamped there. No chance to mark that. There's a chance for a goal now. Waitman. Yes, it's a goal. Well, they're back in the business again. Only three points the difference. They're bouncing back every time the Swans get in front by a fair margin, Bob. Yes, they certainly do, Lou. Uh, you, you can't help but admire, well, since half-time in particular, the play of both sides here. And uh, Dale Waitman, a real opportunist, a typical rover, and three goals so far to Dale Waitman. It's the Tigers back into attack. They're trailing by uh, three points. Roach had a chance, but Roberts is having well covered. Kicked off the ground. Coming in to meet it now is two. He's collared. Goes for the boundary line. And it's out of bounds, but it's still in the Tigers' attacking zone. About 60 metres around from their goal. They're down by three points. And a big chance to go further forward. It's been a crackerjack game here today. Lee got the push down. Not a good one. Roberts got through a short kick. Oh, I tell you what, uh, Williams went up there that time and gave a near one, but he had to do that. And once again, the umpire will ball it up right on the half-forward line for the uh, Tigers. So the Tigers score 15-11, 101 to the Sydney Swans, 15 14, 104. Into the quarter by 14, just on 15 minutes. Plenty of time for either side to do plenty here today. Ball knocked out by Einmunger. Pushed on here by Hawk, overruns the ball. Bauer gets it now, hooks it back over the half forward line. The ball tapped down, a chance now for. Uh, oh, he ducked his head, man. Picked up by Eustace. He's well collared by Tui. Plenty of fun fumbling. Uh, Hawk got one from uh, Waitman, but he breaks clear, goes for a pass, and Pickering's got it. Now he's kicked five goals, this young fellow. He's got a chance to kick six. A great effort from the half forward flank. And he's only about. Only about 35 metres out. As Waitman on replay puts a nice pass forward. Carroll taking the gamble, coming up the ground and then leaving Pickering loose. So Michael Pickering trying for goal number six. Let's see what he can do with this one on the angle. Slight angle. There's the kick. But he's up target. He will make the distance and through for one point. So the difference is only two points now. And don't blame the young fella for that because he's played a great game. 104 plays 104 as we approach the 16-minute mark of this last quarter. Mark Browning to the outer side. He's got a lead out there. Mark is taken by Roberts. That's Ian Roberts. He looks for Bolton, who's been a very quiet player today. It's knocked away by Walsh. Picked up by Sakaski. High ball to full forward again. Plenty of high flyers down there. Hogg caught. Rebound to Browning. Still loose. Raw Roberts got one a little bit too high. Right across the chops. He hasn't stopped trying all day, this big fellow. He's been a real star out there, he hasn't really he? really has. He's yes. done a magnificent job. Deputising, of course, for Rod Carter, who's injured today. Williams from centre wing. Can he find Edmund? The juggle is there. Edmund gets clear of Landy. Hasn't been able to do too uh, much today there. Kappa on the line. Ten goals. So Kappa cracks double figures. 16-14 to 15-12, eight points in it once again. Can the Swans go on? Can the Tigers come back? Robert? Well, the value of long kicking, from full-back a long kick, then when Williams got it, a long kick to Edmund, a long kick again into the square, a great mark that time by Kappa, a magnificent piece of football. So Warwick Kappa, ten goals. I don't know whether he's done that before. I don't think so, but it's a great effort. If he has... He's done it at a better time today, possibly because it's a real crackerjack game and Richmond's still very much in with the charts. Some great individual performances today from Pickering, Kappa, Mark Roberts, and some sterling efforts in the ruck from Ironmonger and Mark Lee back after injury. Ironmonger this time contesting. Got a push in the back, perhaps, from Lee. Holding the ball, says the umpire. That's a tough decision. So Mark Lee to take the free kick. Spent the first quarter on the bench. 
But the Tiger skipper back to some of his best form, and all Richmond supporters watching today would be very glad of that. Soon they could have used him in the State of Origin game. Lee's kick to the right forward pocket, the ball beating Dennis Carroll over the boundary line, and it's going to be a throw in in Richmond's right forward pocket. They trail by 10 points. Eight points, rather. Boundary throw in. Knocked away by Manton. Williams trying to get through, scuttles it or tries to get it out the hawk. Oh, it's going to be a bounce, still only about 30 metres out from the Richmond goal. We're just on the eight and a half minute mark, still eight points the difference in favour of the Swan, but the Tigers have a chance to score here. It's only about 40 metres out from the goal, knocked out by Einmunger, picked up by James, a hand pass, comes back to Pearl, he had to get, had to get back on his right boot. Oh, nearly a mark to Hogg that time. It could have been a free kick against him as the ball is cleared away by Carroll. Back towards the centre of the ground. Sikarski couldn't grab it, but he got it on the rebound. Well intercepted. Oh, good play this time by Healy, but if they've got him, he still gets a long hand pass. The ball pushed away from Edmund. And there we see Francis going for a hand pass. Back to Burton. The Tigers messing about a bit as the ball goes back towards Lee and I have Einmunger. Down go the boat play, but the free kick will go to the big fella, Einmunger. They've had a great tussle, these two. Short pass, it's OK, and the ball marked here by Healy on the centre wing position. Still eight points the difference. Ball kicked high over the centre half forward position. Edmund there in front, pushed away by Burton. He gets a short kick, smothered by Mitchell, but he runs into Walsh. Walsh goes down, tries to push it out. Coming out of the pack now as it's kicked by Landy. There's a chance for the Swans to get clear, but those Tigers won't give in. Walsh and Francis are there too, and there'll be a ball up. Down towards the Sydney Swan centre half forward position. 110 plays, 102 as we approach the 20 minute mark. Well, the Tigers have got to get a quick goal here because the Swans are hanging in there pretty well. Knocked out by the big fella Ironmonger. That kick of uh, Williams is smothered over to Pearl. A hand pass comes to Anir. And he's going to go for a run right around the edge of the square. Goes for a long kick. as a chance now for Pickering again. He's got it. What a game this fella's played too. Oh, God, he's only about uh, 20 metres out. Just on ground for mine. Slight I don't angle. Oh, well, I don't think he can go far past Kappa either. Played 10 goals, it's not a bad effort. No, they've both played magnificently. We're waiting on uh, Pickering here now from a very short distance out. A vital kick. Oh, oh he's missed it. Goodness me. Oh, he's disgusted with himself. They'd be pretty, up there, pretty happy up there at the Swans box. Seven points that if, but still plenty of time for the Tigers. Waiting now for the ball to come back into play as we approach the 21-minute mark of this last quarter. Long kick in, mark taken by Colvin. And then the Swan big gun shoots off. Well, oh, Landy got grabbed, push in the back, whatever. Was it a free kick to Edmund? It's going to Landy, of course. Short pass. A pretty good job on Edmund too. Gets out to James. Left centre wing or more to left half forward flank. A long kick up towards the full forward position. Knocked away by Carroll. Browning takes the rebound. Goes straight to the boundary line. Can he find Roberts? Roberts content to take the ball over though and we'll see a boundary throw in. Still deep in Richmond's attacking zone. Only about 30 metres from the goal. Getting pretty dark here in Sydney but of course the lights come on at half time to counterbalance the shadows past the 21 minute mark of the term a shot at goal is close but again off target and that was put through by Pickering only one point though he's kicked a few points Bob uh, what has he got him down for I've got uh, five goals four by four in front is James oh, over the top Tui is it a mark yes Tui certainly had his hands full with Pickering but he hasn't given in as he kept he keeps on going and Tui will never give in Long kick by the former Geron flanker, Edmund, certainly having his best quarter. Well, he's on top of Landy now. Edmund from left centre wing, long kick. Kappa and Jess, oh, Kappa over the top, free kick to Jess. No, he's gone for the knock-on, tried to get it out to Francis. Doesn't get a favourable bounce, it goes to Healy, picked up by Walsh. In pursuit is Mitchell, just about got him. He has to go back across the goal, could be dangerous, but he's got a couple of runners out there. It's Bauer. On it goes, and picked up by Poole. Still going. Short pass down to half forward. Whiteman and Carroll. 
paddled out to Roberts. Hogg. Bauer again with the opportunity. Oh, bad mistake there. Lee was calling for it. He didn't see him. The two big fellas are there. Pickering gets the hand pass again. Hogg. Kick smothered off the boot. Danger here for the Swans. Picked up by Carroll. Swan skipper goes long. Two on one out there in favour of Richmond. It's Francis. Gets caught. Holding the ball around the neck. Holding the ball. The advantage will play. Edmund playing on. Well shepherded at left centre wing. He's gone for a pass. Kapper and Jess. Just at the back goes the spoil. Picked up by Burton. Burton's gone for a hand pass. Back to Bauer again. Over to Anir and Richmond gets clear. Richmond's got a chance. A long hand pass. Coming out wide now as Landy goes for a pass. Down there towards the forward line. Oh, well intercepted by Roberts. Playing a great game. Beautifully picked up by Hogger. Snap and goal. Hit the both. Five points the difference. And what a game we've got on our hands here. Five points. And the crowd really enjoying every moment of it. Just on the 24-minute mark. And it's five points the difference. Waiting on uh, Roberts to bring the ball back into play. Short pass, dangerous, but it's OK. Oh, he nearly went off that time, Mitchell, but well covered that time by Waitman. He's out there at centre-half, back gone wide. It'll be OK, marked here by Williams on the centre-wing position. A long kick looking out there for Danaher. There's a go now for Tony Morwood coming across as Landy. Picked it up very smartly, but his kick is smothered. And the ball is out of bounds. So Kasky looks in trouble. It looks as though he's got the cramp. Yep. Out of bounds on that half forward on it. I'm blown. They're putting a fantastic effort both these sides, and they'll be pretty tired. Knocked out by Mant that comes back to Mitchell. Hooks the ball back there towards Edmund on his own. But there's Jess coming on the scene. A big punch down. Back it comes down to Eustace. Looking pretty tired. He's clear. The ball shot out wide. There's a chance for Mark. Walsh has got it. Scoops around his opponent, Goldman. Short pass. And here comes over. Roach has got it. No. Oh, he's caught. Play on. Bounced. Well, he thought he had an appeal for the mark, but the umpire, rightly so, said no mark. It'll be a ball up at centre half four. The difference now, five points. Can the Tigers get that goal? There's a chance now as Bauer kicks it off the ground. He's got a chance to pick this up if it bounces right. Goes for a hand pass. Over it goes now to Pickering. Oh, he's grabbed. He's through two of them. He's going to run to an open goal. And the Tigers have hit the, the post. Oh, God, he's having bad luck that kid. I thought he got it through. Four points. He's disgusted with himself. Oh, this is a game that gets you really on your feet. Tony Jill, he doesn't know where he is at the moment, neither do we, because it's such a damn good game. Pickering's Just... efforts have probably deserved better. Yeah, they certainly have. He's played a great game. Morwood in front, has the ball punched away. Eustace, they've got another chance. Richmond, they're bombarding the goals. Roach this time! Well, this fella could be very stiff, Roberts, if uh, Roach kicks the goal because it'll put him in front. He's killed Roach all day, hasn't he? Has. He? He's killed him all day. You're quite right, but Roach won't miss a goal like this. Tell you what, he better not come off if he does. <laughs> so, we'll we'll sit next to Tony Jill on the plane going home. We're playing. Fine mark that. This goal could win the match. We're in the time on by a minute. It won't be a really long quarter. Michael Roach, point blank range. Goal, Richmond in front. Roach is third. It's a long time between drinks for Michael Roach, but it could be. A great trip back on the plane tonight for the Tigers. They lead by two points. Still not time to celebrate, Pete, because I reckon we'd have about three minutes to go. Well, the Swans... On replay now, you see Eustace put the ball down. A fine mark to Roach. And full credit to the Tigers, even though, no matter when the Swans have hit the front, they've kept at it. Two points the difference in favour of Richmond. Can the Swans get a goal? Pumped out of the centre for Richmond. Chance for Paul. Grant were not in possession. And umpire Peter Howe is going to ball it up. Richmond will try and close it up. We're approaching the 27-minute mark. I think time might beat the Swans. It's been a great game of football. Nonetheless, whoever side wins, actually a draw would be a good result. Thumped away by Manton. Picked up by Carroll. Back to the centre wing position. Morwood. They need to go long here, the Swans. Up towards Kappa. He's got it. Oh, oh, oh. oh now he might have kicked 10, but he's got to kick this one. They might not get another chance. Well, he's got a chance, but he's only about 30 metres out. Oh, he's a bit further than that, Lou. On replay. He's well up towards the square. You can see it in the background. And the stat that is not mentioned there is 10 goals. Can he make it 11? No, yes, no. Point. A point the difference. A point the difference. 111 to 112. 
And that clock says 27 minutes on the scoreboard as it comes out the Jess at the back. Hawk. Well, they said a draw would be, the Jess. would be a good result, but it's going to be a Richmond free kick, and Jimmy Jess will take plenty of time. He'll take all the time in the world. The Ghost. 28 minutes gone. 28 minutes gone. I reckon it be about two minutes to go, and the Tigers in front by a point. A point the difference. Jimmy Jess's kick is around towards the wing position. Ball goes to the boundary line, and this will suit the Tigers. Out of bounds on the centre wing position. We're approaching the 28 and a half minute mark. Still a point in the difference, and the crowd really on their feet here at the moment. Up she goes, knocked out by Lee. A chance now for Manton to get clear. Now I can get clear and get that ball away from the pack. Now there'll be another ball up, and of course, everything falling into place for the Tigers. When this happens now, it's holding up play. 28 and a half. We're just on the 29 minute mark. mark. Still plenty of scrimmaging. Williams gets a hurried kick back towards the half four line. Francis, it went between his legs. In goes Edmund, goes to the boundary line and still out of bounds. About 60 metres around from the Swans goal on their half forward line. One point the difference. We wait now for the uh, knockout between Manton and Einmunger. Knocked out by Einmunger. Manton goes after it again. Knocked out to the little fella wait, but he's collared that time by Roberts. Kicked off the ground again. Down goes Anir. Still they can't get clear, it's on the boundary line and out of bounds. And that's the Swans... it right up, Lou, and time ticking away as it looks like Whiteman might be hurt. 29 and a half minutes gone, just about. Knocked out by Mant, it comes back to Eustace, it played a great game, he's put it out of bounds. No, it's a free kick to the Swans. And to take the free kick will be Coleman. He's out towards the centre wing position. He should go for the long kick, he has run up to the forward pocket, the players set themselves. Ball knocked out by the defence of the Tigers, going for the boundary line. Eustace kicks it along the ground. Ball tapped out again by Bauer. Good play, and the ball is out of bounds again. And this is certainly suiting the Tigers. They're a point in front as we approach the 30-minute mark. And the siren due to go in the thick of the clock. And the Tigers in front by a point. Can they hang on and win this game? Man, the ball down again. It's driven up by Burton over the half-forward line. The ball out there of the it is. They've got a for the Well deserved by a point. Well deserved win to Richmond. 16 15, 111 Sydney to Richmond. 16 16, 112. Well, there it was. One of the great games we've seen at the Sydney Cricket Ground. The Swans perhaps unlucky to lose, but when you think about the great play of Michael Pickering, he bombarded the goals up forward. Mr. Lot of Sitters. Well, despite Cappers' 10 goals, Pickering, Poole, and Waitman did the damage for the Tigers in a memorable win. Well, a swag of coaches would come and go before John Northey turned the Tigers around in 1995. After a great start to the season where they demanded and gained respect, the young Richmond side was one of the most feared in the competition. Another former Richmond legend, Kevin Sheedy, now coaching Essendon, would feel a full brunt of the Tigers on second semi-final day, 1995. We start the final term of the semi-final between Richmond and Essendon. The first time in 51 years these two famous clubs have gone up against each other in a final. Grenville through the centre. Daffy's first kick. Richmond are a point in front. It was a goalless third term for Essendon. Here's Daffy. Spins and turns. 14th kick coming up. Gets it to 50. McCurry did well. Gave a little shove on Burke and paved the way for Fletcher. He started a back pocket, McCurry, one of his better attacking players, Kevin shooting the back half. Nash Lloyd. Nash will do well just to hold this up against the taller player. Nash paddles it towards the boundary line. Missed by Masiti. Lloyd goes back. Doolan in trouble. To Ola Renshaw. Ola Renshaw on the old left leg. Harvey and Tate. And out of play at centre win. Tremendous transformation in 20 minutes of football. Remarkable the change in this game. Just the body language now by the Essendon players compared with earlier in the day. It's oh so different. And Richmond, who had no options at all, have suddenly got a few. Deer's quick kick, Daffy and Grenville. Lloyd went without it. Turn against back. The 17-year-old Lloyd has a crack at it. Nash, who's been important in the second half, runs away with a bounce. He's a fantastic kick for goal. He could do it. He's at 45. He goes and misses it to behind. 9-8 to 9-6. Richmond charging home here. Dennis Pagan made the point on talking footy. If you look at Michael Long, 
that North have kicked 40 more goals than Richmond in the final quarters this year. Well, Essendon have kicked about 20 more, Roscoe, when you look at the stats, but Richmond have got the momentum right now. They certainly have. Long time between drinks for Essendon too, Bruce. Uh, goalless in the third term and still having a bit of a struggle at the start of the last quarter. Mercury, got a chance here. Pryor in the middle, goes long and direct. Good long kick by Pryor, bounce all important. Gale met it, heard hand pass. Salmon dragged to the ground, sweeps it clear. Harvey taken by Simons. Simons across his left shoulder, out of bounds on the full. Maybe there was a hand pass on. I think so, definitely, Robbo. Maybe his vision has disappeared under the pressure being provided by Richmond. The kick goes back towards the wing. Broderick, a key player. His left foot kick lands at half forward. Again, the bounce all important. Thompson made it his. Not able to gather. It's forced over. Justin Charles and Scotty Turner. Two of the taller Richmond players. Left half forward for Richmond. The Tigers lead 9-8 to 9-6. You wouldn't say as a spectacle. It has been a fantastic game of football. But as a contest... The people here are enthralled. Some of them over the top. Broderick tries to get it clear. He's got another chance. Handball. Rogers fumbles. Then knocks it clear. Maxfield leaves it behind. Goes after it. Tackled fiercely by Gelford and Thompson. And the ball will be bounced 45 metres from Richmond's goal. Richmond trailed at half time by 30 points. They turned that around in the third term to lead at three-quarter time by a point. Thompson again. Knight's on the end of it. Oh, he dropped it. it as he was caught. He's holding the footy. Dillon's done a great job on him, Bruce. He really has. Dillon to Harvey. Harvey with a little one. He's usually very cool to Pryor. Pryor at centre wing. Essendon 9-6 to 9-8. Gets close to the man on his mark. Salmon on the end of it. Gale, just a little push, and Salmon's taking a good one. At 55 metres, Salmon wants to get on with it quickly. He's got Alessio in the goal square. Killaway drops across to take the mark. That's going to be a key duel now. Killaway versus Hurd. Prescott's kick. Campbell's got to panic. Can run away. One bounce. Two bounces. He's drawing his man to him, and he kicks it towards centre wing. Charles got hold of Fletcher, and it's out of play. Right in front of seven sports commentary box here. We've got the best view of the MCG. O'Connor and O'Donnell look on. Will O'Donnell come back? It will be a big call by Sheedy. Fletcher's left-hand handle not good. Bond courageously. The hip and shoulder was fair. They're in trouble, both of them. Denham, they are in trouble. As a bounce of the ball. Look at this, Bond and Fletcher just behind these two. At Fletcher sixes might, and seven. Fletcher might have come off uh, second best here. It was very fair. Now Bond's picked himself up. Fletcher's still in a bit of strife. Remember, Essendon's got a litany of injuries at the moment. And Bond shakes himself clear. Another look at this uh, hip and shoulder from the two of them. Gee, it was terrific, wasn't it? Great football. Pryor. Oh, that was too high, Maxfield. Too fierce. And Pryor. Fletcher just leaving the scene the hands of the, one of the trainers. The kick is short, very short. Spills to the back. And CD try to break clear. Having no luck there. Tigers, you get the feeling. They can sense victory. You also get the feeling there won't be a lot of goals kicked. Well, they were looking down the barrel at half-time. And Fletcher now looks as though he may have recovered. Essendon with two players on the bench suffering. Barry Young, got well three actually, Barry Young, Ryan O'Connor, and of course O'Donnell who was decked quite heavily by Turner in the third quarter. Still at uh, centre wing, Hurd lays it out, Prescott came on at half time, Knights, high ball, into the centre, Rogers, couple of Essendon players, Thompson, Daffy got a little bit of it, McCurry's handled good to Cowthorpe, inside 50, Essendon, Gale can't take a trick still, but did well to get in front. Kellaway, look at this. Maxfield, he's got Rogers in support. He could have gone on. Goes long. Burke and Turner, their chances. Punch away. Who are the crummers? Fletcher's picked himself up. Well, he fell over. 
Harvey can't quite break it. Richmond have got a wonderful chance here. Broderick, here's a go. Rogers misses to behind. 9-9 to 9-6. I just feel that one goal either way will make such a sweeping difference in this game. They're certainly running better in numbers. Their preparedness to get up and assist too much is much better than Essendon at the moment. The kick in is to Harvey. Harvey can go down the wing. This kick is very, very important. And he does, with precision, find the captain. Bomber Thompson. Short kick. Goes over the back, Otto Inshaw is the advantage there, it is, now the umpire's called it, no, Otto Inshaw not a wake up to it, and it comes back to Alessio, goes in short, towards the middle of the ground, it's Doolan, he's got a player that he could have nearly given the hand pass to, which was Thompson, but kicks it high, and Chris Nash is marked at left half back for the Tigers. Well, gee whiz, what's that all about? no penalty because it didn't hold play up all that much so Nash eventually kicks high towards the wing Harvey up over the top of Turner and interferes with the Richmond player in his endeavours to try and spoil Turner with the free kick he's right on the wing Richmond lead by three points they're 9-9 to 9-6 oh good mark, strong mark big strong man and that's what you'd expect from some of them he goes wide now to go back, Robert. Is that uh, a little bit pedantic, Roscoe? I think so. It's umpire Greg Scrip, I think, officiating yes. there, and uh, he's asked Peter Somerville to come back and do it all again. Now there's no one on the mark. He's going to say he's going to come back. There's no one standing on the mark. The umpire showing him where it is. Now we can start. Can still go to Harvey, but goes longer. Lands near centre half forward. Spills to the back. Callaway has been a grand defender. He's kick across his right shoulder. Out there into the path there of Bond. The bounce was kind to Chris Bond. He gets back onto his right foot. Now he kicks in towards the centre of the ground. Prescott has taken the mark. He's had a few important possessions. His kick has been very well marked by some of it. You still think, what maybe Roscoe, that uh, those big fellas for Essendon are going to be like the key difference. in the finish. Yep. Pryor gets through some heavy traffic and then kicks towards the full forward area. Taken by Alessio. Makes a contest again. Kelthorpe crashes his way through. He's tackled. Well done by Jamie Tate. Stand up, son. And he did. The tackle was so important. He's a good player, this boy. He kicks wide to right half back. It's taken by Broderick. Broderick keeps it wide to Deer. Gets it, the big man. Burke leads for him. Deer kicks to Burke. Gets him. Good play. Three neat passes by Richmond. Should keep it, maybe, in the pocket, I reckon. Campbell's the kick. Goes towards him. He could take this. Well done, Pryor. Maxfield, Campbell. Out of play, but it's at 50. No goals kicked in this final term. We've been playing just over 10 minutes. Essendon has not kicked a goal in the second half. Remember, they didn't kick a goal in the last quarter last week. Charles to the goal square. In front. Rogers has got it. Hey Bruce, I think you're very right with the body language comment you made before. There's no question the Richmond players look... The chins are up, they look more assertive. There's a few hands on hips from Essendon players looking fairly tired. It's been all right, Rogers, 11 and 7. This to give Richmond a nine-point lead. They trailed by 30 at half-time. They hit the front for the first time in the match, late in the third quarter. Rogers from 15 metres out, lines them up and kicks a goal. Suddenly, nine points seems like a mighty big margin. Particularly when you haven't scored for so long from Essendon's point of view. Goal since half time, as we mentioned, and it's good work by Charles to get the ball out of the air quickly and put it forward. I said before in the first quarter, Essendon got a goal in a similar situation, and Bomber Thompson just got caught out there. So, a certain
certain amount of concern now in the Essendon coach's box. And uh, nothing changes. The leading side is Richmond, but not much uh, animation from their coach, John Northey. Crashing through is Gaffey. If he didn't get a rocket at half-time... Oh, go back, Justin Charles. Nearly took it. Against the flow, Maxfield. Kicks it across the face. Rogers again. How the Dickens did Maxfield keep the ball in? It was great effort. A great effort by Charles, too, just to go back and make the contest. He missed the mark. He was assistant at keeping the ball in the air. And that kick by Maxfield, as Robbo said, just outstanding. Well, out of position was Bomber Thompson. But I don't think there'd be two more crucial kicks in the football season this year than the previous one by Matthew Rogers and this one coming up. We kicked two last week, Robert. He has been a good player also for Richmond since crossing from South Australia. He's kicking from 15 metres out. He makes no mistake. The Tiger fans are pretty happy about that. Two goals to Rogers. And after Matthew Knight's kicked three of their first four, Doubles have come from Rogers, Nash and Daffy. There's no question that this had attempted mark by Charles, which is so important in not allowing Fletcher a chance to get the ball. That centering kick by Maxfield, very good. He's been pretty effective since coming on. Started on the bench. This is what this will be like all year. Their persistence and perhaps not giving enough credit for me able to do it all year. The Tigers have kicked the last seven goals in this match. Essendon now need three to win. Herb got it to Dula. They need one in a hurry. Herd's little one over the top to Cowthorne. Try to tap on. Wanganina was brilliant early. Herd again. He's going to get a free kick. It looked lucky. Centre breaks 13 Richmond. Five Essendon. You reckon Herd's the man, Ross? If anyone can turn it around, he is the one. At 70 metres. High ball to full forward. Salmon up. Howard punches it towards the boundary line. It's out of play. Herd's been their best player, Bruce. 15 kicks, 9 marks, 6 handballs, particularly when he's in defence, very good. But hasn't kicked a goal and needs one, doesn't he? And it's to be noted, Bond, one of the very important Richmond taggers, has got Wanganin in the middle of the ground. Alessio in the front spot, tried to lay it down. Prior caught by Naish. And Naish and Daffy have been so important, haven't they, in this second half revival. Free kick to Richmond, going to Naish. They were both so disappointing in the opening half. As Robbo said, wouldn't Daffy have got a rocket? So would Nash have. 88,308. It's the second biggest crowd for the season. McCurry's got it at centre wing. Well, Essendon need to get a goal quickly. McCurry's kicked to half forward. No mark. Tape is there. And now a free kick being held on to was Howard. He clears the pack at centre half back. Goes right to Prescott. Prescott goes in towards the centre. Not bad vision. He was going to blast away. Then found Daffy. Daffy to half forward. And a chance again. Turner, make a hero of yourself. Well, he is left lamenting along with 40-odd uh, thousand other Richmond fans. Better get moved that. Turner to the centre half forward, Robert. Well, they really were struggling, Ross, weren't yes. they? I mean, the Swooper really had to toss it all around and hope that he came up with a... Uh, the solution. Calthorpe has got the football for Essendon. Looks to play on. Then does. You're gone, Denham. You're still gone. Richmond will get clear. Campbell. No, Denham nearly made amends. Calthorpe. Bauer. Campbell. Rogers. A long bomb to the square. At the back, Maxfield. A high flyer. He's still got a chance. Maxfield. Oh, kick it off the ground, Justin. Couldn't get his foot to it, and it's a rush behind of the Tigers. Well, it's certainly been a tremendous struggle. 11 11 to 9 6. Only 20 goals scored in modern football so far. Could you believe it, Robbo, that Essendon has not kicked a goal in the second half? Well, they really have struggled. I, I think it's been uh, Richmond's middle of the ground players that have certainly helped the Tigers. Heard to Grenville. They need three goals to win Essendon. Where will they get them from? Howard. 
in trouble. Threw it away. They might get it from this. Simons at centre half forward. Goes short. Alessio's got it. Well, how it was caught. Now it's his man that's got the footy. Alessio, very important early, kicked two goals in the second quarter when things were happening. This to give Essendon a chance. This to be their first goal since half time. They must kick this to win the game. They can't win if he misses, I reckon. It's close. Hit the post. Hit the post. Hit the post. They've got seven and a half minutes to kick three. Well, you wouldn't think they could do it. I mean, Richmond's defence has been, uh, well, I think quite sensational throughout the year. A lot of their players have stood up under pressure. They've kicked three points from half-time, set shots from Salmon, Salmon and Alessio. That's been their three scores since half-time. Kick in by Bauer. A kick in was marked by Bauer, then to Campbell. Or oh, Tate. Is he going to get a free kick? Yes. yes. Just pushed out at the last minute. So everything happening now for Richmond. They're in front by 16 points. Kick by Tate will land 50 metres out. Good grab. The effervescent Charles. He's nearly 60 metres from goal, but he'll land it nearly in the square. Turn out! Oh, he kicked it anyway. He got his left foot to it and kicked the goal. Well, I think he's been the catalyst for the turnaround, Robbo, just his physical presence and the fact now he's kicked two goals, one in that third, and that's a critical one. That does make it pretty tough. Eight goals to none in the second half. One of the great comebacks, this one. Somerville through the centre. Out wide. Oliver Inshaw at 55 metres. Good kick, a chance. A well-played game. Has he been paid? No. Salmon ripped off it. Gale gets a kick away. He hasn't had too many today. Straight to Lloyd. Essendon have got six minutes to kick four goals. Lloyd goes long. That's one. That's one of them down. Their first since half time. The 17 year olds kicked it. Well, there is time for them to get the rest. So important they get the next centre break if they're going to be a chance here. But the defence, Robert, you mentioned before, of Richmond really has been so very good all year. Today they have stood up, particularly when we didn't think they could match up those tall players like Sam and Alessio and Co. and Hurd if he was down there. They've done it pretty well. It's not a bad kick by young Lloyd either. He struggled early with his kicking. Richmond nearly get it forward, Daffy, but this is Harvey. Harvey's left foot kick. Lands, well done, Gale. Made it his. Still a chance for Essendon. McCurry beaten for it this time by Prescott. Gives away a little bit of ground back to Callaway. Callaway out towards the wing. Chris Bonders bar. Goes in short. Taken by Howard. He won't make the same mistake as he did a few minutes ago. His kick is wide. Taken by Nash. Nash is between wing and left half forward. Good running by Bond. Goes short. Bond's got it back again. 11 kicks, four handballs to Bond, and two tackles. Long kick by Bond, lands at the point of the square. High flyer there was Burke, he couldn't take the mark, it's forced over on the full eventually. And the free kick will be taken in the right back pocket, O'Donnell warming up. You wouldn't think he'd come back into this uh, hothouse. This is Kelthorpe with the footy. Short to Masidi. 12, 11 to 10, 7. Five minutes of football left for Essendon. Or maybe Richmond, but you'd think it was Essendon. They've got to conjure some magic. Denham has been quiet since half-time. He and Knights played on one another early and played such a significant role. They were two of the key men in the first half. Denham's kicked the centre wing. Alessio gets it on now. It's still at half forward, a long way from goal. Lloyd front spot. With him is Tate. Knights to try and mop up. 
Hasn't had a lot of kicks, but he kicked three goals that were unforgettable in the first half. That's a wonderful kick to Bob. Richmond aren't going like winners. Bond at centre wing. Turn of the target. Grenvold with him. And Turner so competitive in the forward line. Gets a free kick. Hanging on. And as Ross Clinton said, this man has been one of the big reasons for the turnaround. Two goals in the second half. Turner from 60 metres. Tries a torpedo. It lands almost in the square. Fletcher at the back. Nature's handle. Daffy's left foot snap. Bouncing. It's a behind. It's 12 12 to 10 7. Daffy has had 15 kicks in the second half. Yes, and Nace has had 11. And they've got four goals between them. Correct. So some bad uh, signs for Essendon. When Lloyd got the ball on the half forward line just a few minutes ago, he was one against three. McCurry gets around Rogers. Thompson quickly. Harvey caught by Bauer. Gets it away only as far as Knights. Underneath there is the football. Now it's a throw deemed by the umpire against Knights. Doolan to Denham. Denham in the direction of Alessio, but Howard outbusses him. And as Mark safely hits an half back, he can go wide. Perhaps the shorter option would have been better to Tate, but he finds Nash wide of Simons. Now Tate, keep going, and he does. Receives the hand pass and then goes short to half forward. Charles couldn't take the mark. This is Wanganoon. Gives away a little bit of ground, Denham. In turn, Fletcher. A heavy bump between him and Bond earlier. Mark again to Howard. He's been reasonable since coming on the ground. He's had five kicks and one handball. He finds Nash. Nash is on the wing. It's a good move by John Northern. He'll let Nash roam a bit when he brought him back on. He got him into the game, and he and Daffy have been huge in the second half. Ross giving out their uh, stats a moment ago. At centre wing, Nash goes for distance. The Richmond chant goes around the ground. Somerville takes the mark. Sweeps out the handball to Simons, who's had a bad game. Just hasn't been able to fire today. Came back from injury last week. Gives it away to Nash. He can really kill it here, Nash. This would be sweet if he could go and he hooked it with everything and kicks a point. But it's a three-goal game. Nash with two goals, two. 12-13 to 10-7. And Richmond will be playing Geelong at Waverley Park next Saturday afternoon. And Essendon, who led by five goals at half-time, will be mothballs for this year. Knights, little kick, quite prepared to waste a bit of time and give an extra possession to the Brownlow medal favourite, Campbell. Campbell is uh, not quite up to half-forward. He's about 75 metres from goal. He doesn't mind. His team leads by three goals. He kicks across the ground and finds Bauer. Bauer will go long. It'll land in the square. Who can make a hero of themselves here? Somerville, to no one in particular. Daffy crashes past Simons. Daffy! Snapshot misses to the right. McDaffy, two goals, one. And the Richmond fans are pretty happy. The Bomber fans will go home from the MCG today wondering what happened in the second half. As the scarves and come out and being waved around. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it, how yep. it comes back to haunt you. Still a struggle by Essendon. Harvey, Hurd, chopped off. Denham, wider still, prior. In turn, McCurry in all sorts of trouble. Terrific signs for Richmond when two or three players go into a prior tackle. And little wonder because they can sense that their surge will go another week forward where Geelong will be their opponents in the preliminary final. Just one week away now, Richmond, from a potential grand final appearance. Oh, Brendan Gale, left foot kick. Bond and Lloyd. The ball goes over for a throw. This will be the first time Richmond has won a final since the second semi-final 13 years ago. It is a long time for fans to wait for a win in the final. 
13 years have waited to win the finals match. It's great for the competition, Bruce. A little give by Mercedes to Mercury at 50. Mercury to bob away. A late incident goal, maybe. He's got it, I think. It's there. But it is an anti climax. Mercury second goal. 12 14 to 11 to 7. He's had a pretty good day, Bruce. 16 kicks, 10 marks, 7 handballs, and now his second goal. He's continued on his good form from last week. He's played all over the ground today, predominantly in the Ford area last week. Even started in the back pocket this last quarter. To reward for good effort. It's Bruce. Been another point, too, that uh, Richmond and Carlton played an old Buffers game at uh, Windy Hill to try and keep them in the competition a couple of years ago. Dead right, 12 14 to 11 7. Jack Dyer coming out here to raise that money that day, leading from the front. Free kick against Essendon, and they've done it, the Tigers! Bring fabulous music.